Hey guys, welcome back to European Exotic Center. This is a 2018 Nissan GTR. Today we're gonna to take it out for a drive and just see how well it's aged over the past decade or so and see how it holds up against uh, today's exotics. The GTR has had quite the legacy over the years. It was unveiled all the way back in 2007 and entered the American European markets in 2009. A very dominant car over the years as well, I will say, putting many supercars to shame. However, we are approaching the end of the R35 era. This specific GTR is tuned, has an exhaust, basically full bolt-ons, making about 680 horsepower, finished in blaze metallic orange. Phenomenal color, of course. I've always really liked the look of the R35, really the whole back end. I think looks fantastic. Massive exhaust pipes. With that said, let's go ahead and take it out for a drive. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we are working with a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. So the stock GTR has 565 horsepower. This one has a tune on it. So it's making about 680 horsepower. <laughs> So zero to 60, but I can't even, I can't even talk, it's, it's too loud. Good. Zero to 60 in three seconds dead, although with the tune, it might be like 2.8, but it moves. Top speed, 196 miles an hour. Still working with a six speed dual clutch transmission. Gear changes have a very mechanical type of feel to them. This is a 2018 Nissan GTR, so there have been quite a few upgrades. Starting in 17, they improved the transmission, the suspension, added a comfort setting, which was much needed because GTRs have always been pretty stiff. One of the biggest upgrades was the interior. Much better materials, seats are better, it's more sound deadening in here, everything, it's a little bit quieter inside. It just feels much more premium than before, which, you know, it really needed an update because it basically had the same interior for 10 years. You have a new steering wheel as well for the newer GTRs. Oddly, satisfyingly soft. So soft. Like, like a pillow. Door panels. Like that's very. It's. I want to say it's like an inch deep of like leather. Only like, the door panels are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing else is that soft. It's like it's. I don't know why. I always noticed that on the newer GTRs, it was so, so plush. I could take a nap on it. Of course, the 2017s and up, you do get newer, improved styling, a facelift. I think it's a much more handsome car overall. Let's put everything in R mode. We do have a different settings here. Suspension. It does have a custom exhaust system. How's it from the outside? Notice though is that under hard acceleration the gear shifts are actually very smooth. Typically it's the opposite. You're kind of easing the throttle and you kind of and you change gear. It's a pretty smooth shift, and then vice versa. It gives you a nice kick in the back. It's not like that this car. You you get on it and it's very smooth. The grip on this thing is crazy. Now this thing is about 4,000 pounds and it does feel quite big. Like it feels long, but I don't know if it feels that heavy as much it just feels like physically it's big but in terms of like when you're in the corners it really shrinks the weight yeah, like not once have i thought about how big this car is that you've been driving it yeah like how big it is has not crossed my mind yeah like it is physically a big car the gtr is all about grip just that mechanical grip you can just <sighs> just insane cornering speeds it is like mind-bendingly quick. Um, like nimble. Yeah, it really shrinks the weight. It doesn't feel 4,000 pounds. Revs to 7,000 RPM. Just snaps into a corner. Nothing really turns in the way a GTR turns in. And it is absolutely on rails. It is, it is, it is yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's not moving. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's so easy to go fast in this car. One complaint about GTRs that people over the 
years would kind of kind of give it was that it was too robotic in a sense and I do know what they mean I mean it is video game ass type of handling like GTA 5 need for speed type of handling what does that mean like it just doesn't make any sense you have all-wheel drive as well so it's you're kind of comfortable doing that <laughs> perfect for someone of my size. They hug me perfectly and I don't know, I've never felt more snug in a seat before. When the GTR first came out, it, it, was, it, was it had monstrous yeah, it was um, amounts of uh, potential. It was destroying much more expensive supercars around the Nürburgring. You know, over the past seven or eight years, we'll say, supercars have really I'd say surpass this in terms of outright performance. Yeah. But that is not to say this car is slow. Not by a, a mile. Because it is monumentally quick. You can talk stock for stock, but really most GTR owners, uh, their cars are not stock. This is one of the most reliable supercars you could buy. Is this a supercar though? Like, would you call this a supercar? Yes. I think this is more of a supercar than like a Corvette because 100% without question. These have actually been compared to other exotics for like car reviews. Like yeah. these were compared and tested against like the McLaren 570, the, the 911 Turbo S. Yeah, dude. This is in the discussion. And I do think styling wise, the GTR looks very nice, especially like at nighttime. If you're following the GTR and you see it from the back, it really does look mean and intimidating. I do like that GTRs kind of give you like this. Uh, it makes a lot of like mechanical noises when you're driving. It kind of reminds me of like a Porsche GT3. <laughs> Do you have four seats? Sort of. You can see out of it really well. It really is a true daily driver. You got a nice size trunk. I don't know. For $120,000, I mean, I think they're a lot of car for the money. They're reliable. You've got some really cool boost gauges on the screen here. It's got. Uh, now the newer ones have a comfort setting, which, I, as I stated earlier, really comes in handy uh, on long journeys, and it just feels much more premium than they, they it used to. Really, the GTR, the R35, is coming to an end now, and it is kind of bittersweet because we've seen it for so long. When this car came out, the Ferrari F430 was the the new hottest Ferrari. You know what I mean? Seriously. Yeah, the 458 hadn't even come out yet. Now we're at the F8, right. and it's just, this car has seen a lot of competition over the years, but that does not mean that you ever underestimate a GTR, because they're still one of the most common cars on the drag strip, at car events, car shows in general. I mean, there's a, GTRs are very popular, and there's a reason for that. It's and an there are car. some hardcore GTR fanboys out there, and there are some hardcore GTR haters out there. It's still a fantastic car for $120,000. I mean, those cars are double or and what more. You can do, I mean, if you get it for 120 k and put 30 grand into it, it, then it's not even to say it's the same zip code as those cars. Exactly. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. This car is for sale here at European Exotic Center. Check out our website to visit all the photos of the vehicle. And I will see you guys in the next one.